I scale, seriously, I scale is, is just epic fun. Hi guys, Brett here from Hearns Hobbies, and I've got Simon Healy with me. I've crashed the party. That's right, because we are going to be building HB Racing finest electric eight scale buggy. Well, you have already been building the mighty E eight one nine RS. I have been building it. Yes. Is this like episode three? This is episode three. So a quick recap: um, the process to build these um, cars by the book is shocks first, diff second, then we start the good stuff. Now I thought I'd get Simon in to help me help you enjoy the build. You just want me to do the crappy work. Yeah, you do all the good stuff. You know that. You know so, how good the so, good stuff so, is. So he, he's put the turnbuckles in front of me. Yep, with bag C. Yep. He, like, wonder oh. why. Wonder Woman. All right, so I get to open them? Please. There's a knife there. We've got all the tools. I've got my nine it's steps. Already, it's already open. I've got my nine steps tool kit. Oh, probably because you're in there ferreting around. All right, what have we got? There's an empty bag for you. I love empty bags. All right. <clears throat> so two different... Uh, three. Three what? Three different length turnbuckles. No, I was going to say two different turnbuckle hex size. Yes. So they use a bigger a bigger turnbuckle on the front camber link. Why? Probably because it cut, gets such an absolute... It gets violated so much harder? Yeah. Especially when you're... One. Especially when you're you're out there operating stuff. Yeah, probably. You're probably so right. we got six mil on them. We've got a six mil, and, <laughs> and, got a five, six mil tension and five mil on the others. And five mil. So they're not they're not um, messing around these turnbuckles. Yeah, right. So what I like to do is, is lay them out as as the car would be. What's be interesting? Doing, yep. Is the actual six mils are like a proper hex, and then you got a like a, a four four way. A, you know, like a like four a, way. Flat sided. Well, it's not a hex. It's it's just four four. You know, flats. We'll call it square. Yeah. Four sides. We'll go square. Rectangle. Which is fifty five mil. <clears throat> I've got my. Uh, well, you should need to, because why? they're hex. 58. They're square, and they're hex. If you look at the book, it tells you. You don't have to measure them. Well, I just like to make sure. Crikey, it, jeez, you. No, I can't I, believe just, I've got you in on this. I know. I'm just. I just kind of. You know? So these are the steering ones. All right, front camber, front steering. The balls are pretty cool. They are so cool. You wouldn't think on an eight scale buggy that you would have um, aluminium Teflon coated balls, but they really do. Yeah. No? No. They're saving every ounce or gram. They're definitely uh, Swiss. They're definitely using the metric system. Yeah, right. And there's the rear ones. I, I had it. Are you going to get them started? In a second. I'm just arranging the situation here. The situation. What is the situation? Do you, <laughs> can you see what I'm doing here, mate? You're violating it. Really? Yep. Is that what you're saying? Mm hmm. Got a little bit of assembly loop here. Look at that. We'll get that one started. I don't have any power tools for this. You pass them over once you start them. I'll finish. Alright, you finish them off. Yeah. Can yep. I have the biggest driver, like three mil driver scenario that you've got? You're not going to warp me plastics, are you? Yep. Just going to destroy them. <laughs> you want to put the ball? All right. Not putting the balls in there? Not yet. All right. Calm Do down. Do you know which balls go in there? I can't see the manual that well because of the glare yeah. from the light. Because of your glasses. Here we have the camber links. I'm just using the they remote. Actually, they, they actually screw on really nice, to be honest. For big chunky ones. For for such a big thread. Big thread? Big thread in. They actually not a not a huge amount of like they're not actually sticking and tight. Well that's because I'm using a bit of assembly lube and I am getting them started. I'm just using the body reamer. Well, it's not a body reamer, but just a little reamer here, just to get the little taper going on the outer edge. And that just helps ensure that I do get it started straight. You know what I mean? There's, there's your, there's a turn back on, mate. I reckon you should put that on your, your Yokomo. On your, on your earring. You're gonna, no, you're gonna need Comical. them. On, you're gonna need them on your Yokomo. But I don't know that my bulkheads will stand up to it. After I seen you on Saturday driving it. Yeah. yeah. What did you think, mate? Bit loose. Bit loose. Well, you wouldn't expect anything else, surely. 
Look at that. We're smashing through this already. Are we? Yeah. Are we really? Yep. Just keep them coming. I'm just... I'm trying, mate. I am definitely trying. You're trying me on, that's for sure. So yeah, you already... How'd you go off the diffs? How'd the diffs feel to build? The diffs were good. Um, they are a little bit tight. If you were really, really fussy, um, you could sort of... When you say tight, you mean as in a bit clearance? Notchy. Yeah. Oh. But the... But the they're, they're meant to be apparently so did you buy yourself a white marker uh or did I, you I use mine before yeah, you gave it back yeah i ran yours out before i gave it back right you know i'm not allowed white markers yeah right what what do you mean yeah right yeah right what are you trying to say i'm not saying nothing i'm just going yeah right just say it mate say just, what just get it out no don't let fear hold you back there's no fear Fear doesn't even come into it. Now, they use an offset, don't they? They're using an offset a ball cup for the steering. That'll be on the wheel end, is that correct? Now, why do they do that? So when it's at full lock and the Ackerman and all that kind of stuff's kicking in, the wheel's not rubbing on the actual camber link. I mean, on the, sorry, the, the plastic ball end. And the manufacturers will often chop and change that, won't they? They do. They, they you know, <clears throat> like... And that's part of the fundamental, um, what would you call it, geometry of the steering. So I know, for example, uh, Yokomo have recently gone away from it, <clears throat> they, haven't they? They, on their 3 version, had uh, angled, and on the 3.1 they've gone to a straight. Straighty 180. That's right. How we You're not even measuring these. No. Are you just doing them until the thread disappears? Yeah, and then when you put it on the car, you set it up. Then on, you set it up. On your setup station like you love to do. You know I do love a good setup station. Yeah, you just like chomping at the bit to get that thing out of the box all the time. You know me. Now, you can see here I'm just giving it a little ream. Just to help get the, the thread started. The thing about 8 scale um, turnbuckles is they're a lot easier to work with compared to 10 scale ones. But they're not quite as fiddly. Well, no, when you got just a lot more meat, but, you know. And they are super resilient. I've seen a lot of things break on these cars, but not turnbuckles. They are tough. They do um, a titanium set yep. for them, and I haven't seen, I haven't seen it utilised yet once yet. Well, I suppose that's if you really want to get your car light, that's what you. But titanium in an eight scale, I don't, I don't really know if it would be a benefit. It could probably break a heavy car. Titanium doesn't bend; it normally just snaps. Especially with you behind the wheel. Yep, I'm an animal. No. Yep, break everything. Ah, <laughs> oh, I'm trying to do this barehanded. Even, even my spirit. Even your what? What? It's it'll break everything. Even my spirit. Oh, all right. I'm just trying to see where's the line on that one with the offset. Would you like to have another look at it? Yep. Now, now that's just so I can set them up all in the same direction. I haven't finished with that one. Oh, well, okay. So, you know which way you're going to go with it? No idea. Line to the left or line to the right? Well, there's one backwards. Is there? Well, it can't be me who have done that wrong. Well, it can. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even backwards. You just had it set 180 out. Oh. <laughs> Cheap. Cheap shots. Shots Cheap. fired, people. Shots yeah. fired. My favourite pub burned down last night. Never mind. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so what have we got? I wonder if anyone got their fingers burnt. Probably. Bit of friction. What am I looking for, mate? I'm a bit discombobulated today. You look a bit fried, actually. No, not even close. Loving it. Now, the reason that we're doing this eight scale buggy is hopefully going to take it up to the Nats. The Australian National Titles. Where's that at? That's at uh, Sunny Coast. Raceway? Yeah, yeah that, now I now didn't is, get that one this started. Is Brett's, this is Brett's hand. No, 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 no. <laughs> This is Brett's handiwork. It's as bad as bent as he is. Like, we're going to start talking pliers in a second. Tell you what. What? 
Tell me what. Talk about bent. Now, did you know that these ball cups have got a um, side that you push through the balls? Normally, the hole is a little bit bigger, or the, the, the start of the opening is a bit bigger on one side. Than on the one other. side. So, and you can tell that because there's like a little bit of gloss on the ball end. So it'll make the assembly a little bit easier, and yeah. the ball cup lasts a lot longer, tolerance-wise, if you just push it through the right side. Yeah, remember that, okay? And there is. Well, they, they make it really simple because there's four kinds of different balls here. Do you know, to go which, on. Do you know which ones go where? I'm just going to work it out, mate, and try and get it into the right. So these are the steering ones, and I use my little pliers here. I'm going to locate that. Click, and it goes. You look like you've done that. This, one's, this one here. These are fantastic, these little multifunction, uh, what well, are commonly referred to as shock pliers, but they can do anything, including ball caps. Yeah. Look how good. easy that goes in. Well, that's what they're for. Do you want me to demonstrate trying to put it in the wrong way? Well, only if you want to replace the parts. <laughs> Not really, no. No, I actually don't. So, because it is quite hard and you can stretch the plastics, they will work. But, like I said, there's a little gloss lip on one side of the ball cap, and it just falls together but these pliers do make it really easy and they also when you want to pop them off if you need to do if you need to swap one over or if you put it on wrong well no if you if you crash and you crease or bend the actual the, the plastic ball end mm -hmm. you can just get the pliers and you pop the, the little ball back out that is right and then swap over your plastic end and pop it back in all right so I'm just doing a little bit of forethought, forethought, forethought here. You actually look a little lost. So that's going to go there. That's 180 out. So because these have got different, the camber links have got different ones. So let's work on here. Let's work on the inner shiny side. Is this this is the front upper camber link? Yep. So that's the inner, and this is the outer. Can't guarantee that, you know, like... That what? Nothing. Oh. Now you got to do the opposite on the next one. Yep. So, that's here. So, the inner ball in. Yep. Smash it in. It's quite entertaining. Just smash it in there. I'm trying. You're making it look too easy. Well, I'm trying my very best, mate. I'm trying to look like... You know what you're I doing. know what I'm doing, and it's a tough act to follow. So, and you, I get a bit of um, performance anxiety around you. I've got to say. So, so when's the um, test day? There's a bit of pressure. Test day for this. Yeah. Well, now that the track's open, our local track's going to be declared as open. It's going to be soon. How long do you think it's going to take us to build this one? So, where are we going to test it? Probably EMCC, I'd say. On the new oil track. The new oil track. What do you reckon? Be a bit of fun. I'm going to video it. While you run it in for me, what do you reckon? Have we got any? What are we going to run it in with? Uh, what blend? No, nineteen hundred kV blend. Oh, four S. We got nine steps. We have got a new range of batteries that I'm really excited. Lipos. Yep, new ex new bunch four, of lipos. Four S lipos. Yes. So what size capacity? Uh, Eight thousand. Wow. Are you going for like an endurance race? No, but the 5500 shorties, yep. um, it just sort of takes its toll on them, I'll be honest. Just doesn't keep the crack up enough. No. Or it does, but the batteries themselves actually have been a little bit temperamental. So Well, they're just probably getting too much to on them, too hard with yeah. the 4S system. And they just cry no more. Lipos have got <coughs> a... Lipos are really, really good, but they do have quite a specific so operating these, these, so these new ones are they h so the 4s are they hv or just the standard 4s standard whoop, standard 4s right okay Eight thousand, and they they've got uh they probably will be i'm getting them in tomorrow so i'm going to weigh them up and i'll see them on friday's show cool so i'm going to weigh them up they come with not with bullets but they come with xt60 or XT, xt90s yep i'd like to put xt60s i'll find them quite neat mm -hmm. um, and wire it up to this sucker which don't, is don't let jack. me touch it right that's going to have plugs on it. I'm putting plugs on it. Okay, because I'm good at blowing stuff up. Yep, that's right. Smoke signals, yep. isn't it? Yep, I was, I was talking to um, <laughs> the Apaches on the weekend. 
<laughs> Radio. <laughs> that is bag C. That's the candle. What I love about HB Racing is they really they put everything in one bag and they make it quite easy, don't they? Yeah. Like for a big turnbuckle, and we even young Simon here is going to struggle to break that. Uh -huh. Bag D. I love how it's alphanumerical order. That was a big word. Yeah. This time of night. Yeah. Mm. You like that? Excuse me while I. Now, what are you going to tell me about this chassis? It's aluminium. And it's black. Black. And after the first run, it won't be black. EMCC actually is really clay. Sounds silly, but really clay. And it absolutely doesn't mold the um, chassis very much. It's much like our Kilo off road track. Whereas well, with the, with, with the oil, the chassis will last a lot longer. Yeah. Because it, uh, you, you don't get that abrasive, sandpapery feel. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no big bricks and stuff sticking out of it like some of the rural tracks. But if you have a look here at the machining and the CNC work, mm -hmm. it's phenomenal, isn't it? It's pretty it good. Is, that is really like, good. Look, like they've, they've put a lot of... You know, How thick is it? Get the verniers out, mate. Measure it. Is it four mil? I'm going to say it's four mil. Without reading the specs. Three. Three mil. And a half. <coughs> oh. Four, mate. No. Nah. No? Nah. It's about 3.2. Is it? There you go. Do you want my glasses? No, no. It's all good, mate. I was not... So, I don't know how well that your vernies are calibrated. They're pretty well calibrated, <laughs> mate. It's actually three mil. Is it? What I first said. Yep. Yeah. Four mil's way too thick. Yeah, they do have that, HB do have that as an option part for their Truggy. They have a four mil. The Truggy's a totally different beast. Uh -oh. It's an animal, that thing. It doesn't come with it in the kit, but it's an option. Yeah. And you it's, know, the funny thing about these aluminium chassis is once you bend them, you can never straighten them. No. The aluminium just never comes back. Well, it wouldn't, would it? No, so when you bend it, like you do quite often, and you know, bend it. Bend it like Beckham. Yep. That's what I like to say. I'm just getting so, these So what are you doing up. now? What's this tool? This Besides is, the tool operating it. This is a four mil uh, tap. And these, That's a must in eight scale. These plastics are super stiff. Oh, so you got a three mil here? I've got a three mil and a four mil. So building any car, these things are just a must. Yep. Either that, or you've got to um, use a power drill to put the car together, and I don't like it. I don't. Like a Twenty-two volt Makita. No, no, I like to hand finish everything. Um, but if you do try and hand finish it without tapping the threads, you'll actually half damage the the head of the screw. The head of the screw, and eventually the tip of the actual hand. Because you're and the plastic's not as good either. No. So by putting something like this in, and we've got our did I get the big enough tools? Got my nine steps tool kit here. Where You're is my mil. two and a half mil? Two and a half. There's three. Two and a half, mate. I said. Did two I stutter? And a half. Yeah. Oh my lord. You did. You said three. Two. What is it? If you lost it. This is embarrassing. Here we go. Now this is obviously the hold the battery. This is the hold the battery. It in. goes. In this goes right. Got some lube piece. on it. Got a bit of lube. Got my two and a half mil here. Just going to offer it up. It's going to be a full size pack, this one. So I'm going to run it quite rearward. When you say full size, you mean like. Full length. Like a, like a normal stick pack. Yep. Yeah, or the brick pack. Yep. 4S. The big, brick. Big unit. The brick. Because <clears throat> they literally are like the size of a house brick, aren't they, these ones? Some of the cars that go for saddle pack and stuff but I don't buy into it look at that the chassis assembly has started all right now we've got to put on our side pods I'm and they get, rip it open. they get straight into the chassis and even the instruction manual recommends a little bit of Loctite well, these are see these screws yep. here these are actually used in the D418 are they yeah they hold the center diff mount in because they got a step they got a funny step where they yep. locate into the chassis so what i like to do with my um loctite is i'll put it in the parts tray which you've conveniently left off camera 
Well, I just spilt the screws because right. you got in the way. Spilt the screws? Spilt the screws. And then I'll put it in the parts tray like so. Do you know what I like about this? Yep. What, what's that? You just said, yep, you do. What, what do I like about this? That it locks this? into the step face on the screw, doesn't no, pull up on the no, plastic? No, not at all. And allows not a bit at, of Not at all. What do you like? I like the fact that the screw is inboard, so it doesn't fill up with dirt. Yeah. Yeah. And it does, like I said, it doesn't go into a plastic thread. It goes into... It goes the, into the aluminium. Yeah. It's, it's great because... When, when you're smashing around the track and, you, and you know, you're landing and stuff, you get this build-up of mud and grit and dirt in the head of the screw and you've got to dig it out. Like Constantly. In Tensco, you've got to di dig it out with a little scriber or something before you put the driver in there. And then if there's a little bit left in there and the driver doesn't seat 100%, you end up stripping the head out of the screw. Uh, it probably happens to you quite a bit, though. Would you like the other side, Garth? Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind. So this way, this is great because they're inboard and they don't get smashed like that. Now this is it. This and is. and the screws have a nice flush finish in the in the chassis. Yep. So and they don't pull up too hard on the plastic and dis distort it. Well, they can't because they've got an edge. They they bottom out. That's right. I have in some cases actually seen people pull these through the screw. Because they, they, they've used the three quarter impact gun. Um. Oh, and they've banged their buggy up. Yeah. I would like to get these in carbon though. That would be essential. Look at this little recess here for the. The Velcro. Oh, that's pretty good. They've really thought of a lot of things here. You know, that's what makes a HB like just that little bit special is the quality in the machine and the little, like I said, well, the, let's, the let's screws. Um, some really good de design features that have been really thought out well. So, what tyres are we going to smash on this? What tyres? Yeah. What have, what have we got? Hot race. Yeah. Hot race. Uh, GRPs. Why not? We'll get we'll get stuck right into it, mate. Pin tires. Uh, we've got bar tires. Saharas. In in eight scale. Yeah. They'll be epic. On the oil, they will be epic. Won't they? Yes. Um, I think, judging by that, I run hot race on the weekend. Judging by the the wear and the characteristics of the ten scale tire, it's actually the identical compounds that they use in these. Yep. Um, and I think it was primarily developed as an eight scale tire that's been adapted and they've just copied it into the 10th scale yeah. carcass yeah and not that that's a bad thing but like i said i think that these will really come alive and we're going to put some grunt through this what 1900 kv that's not grunt that's a start yeah but i run a pretty a pretty schmicko um a fair bit of boost and turbo in this so we're going downhill already yeah <laughs> Just, it's, oh, it's already gone downhill. <laughs> We're taking all the class out of the build. You just like, you had me there until you just stayed, said boost and turbo. No. But I do rather use a, a motor that is well suited and then power it up rather than an over, overpowered motor that you're trying to get all the power out of. Really? Yeah. I think especially these four pole Four um, poles are an aggressive motor. They're really aggressive, and they don't have like a really long um, well, they don't, RPM curve. Well, no, the, the ESC doesn't tune like a 10 scale ESC. It's not as fine. You don't have the parameters. You don't have that all that smooth start and stuff like that that yeah. you can get in a 10 scale tuning. Okay. No. So that's you, why I like you know, to run put, a little you bit. Know, you put these on upside on the wrong side of the chassis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. He's just, he's just being funny buggers. All right, come aren't on. Look, we are smashing, look at that. It is like, e. looks like a buggy. Baggy. E. It's actually starting to look all right. And do you know what's um, really good? I know that we've done a, a tent scale build recently. Yep. Is the eight scale one actually comes up on camera a little bit better. You can see it, you mean. Without it. Put the parts on the book because they stand out better. Yep. We're going to that flat tray. So we've got the diff mounts. And if people are asking why are all these packets open, um, it's simply because I've been tapping the threads. So, so to save a lot, a lot of time, why Brett's been home having his skinny soy lattes? Yep. He's been tapping the threads. Almond, almond latte. Yep. Double decaf. Yep. Hint of cinnamon. With his cinnamon cookies. Yep. Having a Belgium dip. Mmm. Dope. What have we got? Did you say dope? No, Belgium dip. I thought you said Dope. Austin Powers where he like 
get to, anyway. You're right, okay. Yep. I don't know what's going on here. Where, where are we at? So? What am I looking at? Centre differage. You need you need button head screws, metric 3 by 25 millimetres long. I assume... Uh, these monsters. Those critters there. And the centre diff unit. Now, yeah. from episode 2 you might know that I, I wasn't here actually, for episode 2. I didn't actually go with the kit set up. So what it, the, oh, so you've gone on your own um, a little bit. Yeah. So the kit setup is 5 7 and 2. 5 7 and 2, yep. yep I, I want to say I would be going up on an oil track. Yeah. So I didn't build it for an oil track initially a few weeks ago. Yep. It wasn't oiled then. Uh -huh. um, but it's currently got uh, 8 8 and 4 in it. Which will be okay because I'm only going to do a couple packs and fully rebuild it because oh, these, so, so these you, diffs eight, do need eight front, running. eight centre, four rear. Yep. So you're going for a, a calm front with a lot of grip in the rear. Yep. Yep, and that's going to allow me to um, get some horsepower down, hopefully. That's what I'm saying. You, I have never know, assembled you know a diff like this. No, I haven't. But clearly, I, I can see that. I haven't actually assembled one like this before. I've always done it. In fact, I'm going to do it how I always have done this. Put the two... Um, Put the bottom in first. Yep. This makes sense to me. <clears throat> Where is... The four screws. You're going to put any lube on them? Yep. Oh, I thought you'd lubed it. No. Come on, mate. It's, it's too hard. If you're not here to lube the screws, then what else are you here for? It's just to can crap on you. Wow. Oh. Just to, you know... Well, I hope you feel... I hope you feel proud. Just to keep everything in check. Check, check, one, two. Yep, just to make sure that you know, don't put too much boost and turbo in. No, no boost. I'm only here as the, uh, the sidekick. Well, this is your gig. No. This one? Well, you're going to have to run this one. So, uh, so, okay. Oh, you know who would be a good test pilot for this? Who? Nathan. He would definitely be a good test he, pilot. He, he, he would, would drive he would, the wheels off of he his. He would put it through its um, reliability program. All while doing a track record pace. Mm. No? We'll get young Nath out for a day, what do you reckon? Well, he, he has raced Nitro. Has he? Yeah. How did he go? Probably too slow for him. Uh, too slow for look, me. He, look, he's a lot younger then. He yep. liked it, but the concentration for the distance. You know, like the long... long oh, he did finals. Like yeah, half an hour, yeah. he, he wigged out at about 20 minutes. Yeah. And see how these screws are just going in, like one... The th well, obviously, cutting the thread is just key. And that and way... Because you... the screw's not pulling the thread, pulling the... What happens is, if you don't cut the thread, it gets hot, the friction builds, it pulls the plastic, wrecks the thread, and it all locks up or strips. That's right. And you can't actually feel when it's getting tight. Like, it's like a false... Mm. A false sense. So it actually looks like it's screwing into aluminium. Yeah. And it's really nice sharp taps as well. I've had those taps for quite a while, but I've only ever used them on plastics. And they'll last forever if you look after them. Yeah. Actually, I'm just going to loosen these off a little bit. I don't like to do these four screws up. You shouldn't have them tight until this is on. That's right. That's exactly what I was... Look at that. Look at that nice snap. Yeah. I know. You know? That... Really nice. Okay, then I'm going to put the center diff in, <clears throat> like so. It's a bit wobbly, mate. Well, that's because it's a little bit loose. Then I'm going to go ahead and put. Do you know which way it this goes? Is, this is like going. Um, this is like Lego. A little bit like Lego, isn't it? This is next. Looks like these are next. Yeah, these have to come on and off a couple times, believe it or not, throughout the build. Why is that? Um, the center brace. Because the center brace. Do you know which way they're going? Um, they go underneath. No, but obviously the angle. The um, angle. Well, they both cut of the same piece and they actually locate the battery at the front here. If that makes sense. But they will have to come off again anyway. Do you want any lube on these? Uh, yeah, we can put a little bit of lube on these. It's a nice long thread. These are a nice two mil screw these ones. Well, three mil thread, two mil head. Have you cut the th have you cut thread on this? Yeah. You can tell by the length of them. They're threading a long way. Wow. You can imagine how much stress they go through. Without cutting the thread and no lube. Well not only that, but you can see how much stress that, that is actually gonna take this 
this three mil screws, mm. how much torque and flex that they'll be under. That will be under duress. Duress even. So I like to have them matching just because it looks cool, but one of our team drivers, Alan, has actually been in, in collaboration with um, Berserk RC. Yep. And actually fabricated a carbon fibre full top deck for this. You, Have you, you say, seen it? When you say full top deck, you mean from this point out? For, and here back. Okay. Like a whole one. Yep. Like a touring car. Yep. That does up around these four bolts. Yeah. That is a super stiff car. I'd actually really like to drive it. Be very re like it'd be very. Um... Yeah. And the way that they have these cars set is quite um, stiff, I suppose you call it, um, what, across the longitude, longitude, but it does allow it to twist. Yep. So we'll talk across the chassis, mm. where he's pretty much eliminated all of that. It's a super rigid car. I can't imagine it being very forgiving, but it's probably good on oil. Yeah, but it also will, will you know, the response would be quite sharp, but predictable too. Because when you've got a car for a lot, a lot of flex, sometimes the response can be vague. Sometimes the grip can be too much. Sometimes yep. the chassis can wind up and let go type scenario. That's right. So what I've done here is I've pulled these four down yep. all nice and even. And I'm going to go over here and I'll tighten these ones up in yep. the cross pattern as well. And like I said, I'm not going to apply heaps of torque to these because I'm going to be... Where's my two and a half mil going? The one right in front of you. I thought it would. There we go. No need to brief on these. But it is important to check it after every run. That goes without saying, doesn't it? Look at that. For such a big piece. Just, just a cut, little bit of clearance. Which is what you'd want. Yeah, you don't you'd want You'd want a little bit of float. Because when that moves or whatever, you don't want it. All the chassis yeah. flex and, and a bit of heat. That is... That is super nice. I'm really happy with well, that. Well, that's bag E and bag E, the, the two steps here. Yep. That's that's done. Are we going to move forward? How long have we been going for? I don't know. Do you count? About half an hour. I reckon so. I say we. I say we carry on. I say we keep. Keep on keeping on. Keep the progress going. All right. Arms. Bag F. Bag F. So, what I'm going to do here, folks, is actually fit option parts are you going straight into option parts going straight into option parts what have we got this, here this, mate this is factory this is can you read it out for the people so front suspension um, set hard uh, hard hb double one five eight double three is the part number yes yes it is and why are you going hard arms please tell um honestly you don't know Honestly, because I like a really direct feel. Um, you generally you go. Oh, I like I like a really direct feel, and I don't mind if it loses. This car's got so much steering. I don't mind if we lose a, um, a little so, overall. So, so just let me clarify this with with the viewers. Yes. Okay. You're Hello. going to hard arms because you want the car to be a bit more responsive. A little bit more responsive. So you, the harder arm over the standard kit one, which is like a medium or a soft, do you know what it is? They've only got two two kinds. of Okay, so we'll, the kit we'll, spec. We'll just, and, uh, we'll just call it kit, like a medium. Yep. And then you got hard. Yep. And there's the plate that comes in with the arms that goes into the into the. Um, and you're also replacing the plate with a hard carbon. Yes. You are hardcore. Yes. Now what this does is actually makes the car a little less forgiving um, and it will be more likely to prone, uh, so more, more prone to actually cracking the arms in winter. But my front drive shafts will remain straight. Now if I put the standard arms on and I cartwheel it, there's just about a good chance that every run it's going to come back with buckled drive shafts on the front. When you say, you mean bent, like a bow in them? Yeah, a bow in them. And I do well, not like that at all. Because there's too much flex in the Yeah, because there's a lot of flex in them. And when you're saying flex, are you talking about flex like that? Or you're talking about twisting Across, flex? twist. Too much right. twist. So you're saying it's twisting yep. when you hit the pipe. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why you've gone hard arms. Yeah. 
So this way they'll just shear off. So when you hit the... <laughs> <laughs> like so, shear pins. So when you hit the pipe... Yep. You're just going to go over it now. Yeah, hopefully put a hole through it. Or through it. <laughs> <laughs> or somebody's leg. Just wanted to clarify that so everyone's on board with that. Yes. Um, and the, the front carbon plates not a lot of people use. Um, because they're too stiff? Because they're too stiff. Um, and I really less like them because they're aesthetic. They're aesthetically pleasing to me. But yet you want me to drive the car. Um, well, I might put the standard arms on when you drive it. <laughs> That's a good idea. It might be a bit more forgiving. <clears throat> no, well, I'm a bit slower than you. And, and when I do have accidents, oh, I and, and I do have accidents, I we generally... All, we all have accidents. I generally don't hit things very hard. I've got the 1.5. Have we only got one 1.5? I don't know. I've got the one that I could see. Well, this is going to make it. All right, there's another one right in front of you. Is this? It? It's all right, you just hold these two. Now, mm. I haven't tapped these threads. Now, you need to sort of pop it in. I'm just working that out now. You sort of pop it in. It's, it's countersunk on one side. Oh, I can see that. I've got the visual. Now, with the rear ones, we actually... Look at that. It's common... Yeah, precision engineering. I tell you what, Paul does a good job, doesn't he? <clears throat> Paul Sims does an amazing job at Berserk RC. I usually start from the middle hole and work my way around. Not that I need to tell you, you've built these. You've built a lot more kits in your time than I have. I had a HB 8 scale yep. buggy. Yeah. Well, they've come a long way since then, mate. Black and That's when t TVs were black and white. No, no, and EP, EP buggies are actually skyrocketing. So I was running two shorty packs in my car then. Were you? Yeah, and my EC wasn't liking that. Didn't like it? No, nah, it was doing a voltage failure. I'm surprised. What motor did you have in there? Just a little one. Little one? Yep. So... It wasn't that powerful. <laughs> But they have come a long I think way. It was They're electronics for these, and these they're still probably at I, the start of I their development. I think it was 2,050 kV or something like that. Yeah. So the step. So it was the next, next step, step from the 1900. Yeah. A truggy motor. And electric truggies is really taking off too. So if there's a lot of interest around it, and people want to see it, we might even build and get out. That is the fledgling class at the moment. EP truggy, electric truggy. And um, yeah. I mean, the nitro truggy class is wild. Isn't it? Did they just hold them things flat and they just almost would climb anything and go well, over Well, that's why, anything. and I think they're appealing to a beginner sort of thing because they're a little bit more forgiving. Are these are these droop screws? These are droop screws. Now, I know you don't like them and I know you have your reservations, but I love droop screws and I live for them. Well, you are a bit droopy. So here we have... <clears throat> Now, did you notice that there's they've had your white marker out? Oh, wow. Did you notice that? I, I did see a white mark. Now, they've had your white marker out and they've put that on there. So, um, you know that it's got hard arms. Efficient. Yeah? Just, yep. Yeah. Just efficient. Where did you put my old drip? Oh, here it is. Now, these screws are really cool. What do you like most about them? Nothing. Uh, I like the fact that they... Okay. Look, look, it's... 8 scale has droop screws and that saves you actually having to pull the shocks apart to put limiters in them and all that kind of stuff, which is really great. 8 scale, seriously, 8 scale is is just epic fun. If, you, if, you, if you've got an 8 scale and you bash around, you know, the reserve, the paddocks and that, like, they're fun. But when you get an 8 scale on a track and you're having a good time, yeah. an e-buggy especially... Um, they are just awesome fun. And you are not just anybody. You've got a state championship for e-buggy, haven't you? Is that right? Am I am I hearing that right? Oh, maybe. Did I read that on your LinkedIn profile? Could have. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you're no slouch with the e-buggy. I was lucky that day. Oh, well. <laughs> you're lucky it didn't break. <laughs> every, like, every... Lucky you didn't plug your speed in backwards. Oh, I tell you, who would do that? <laughs> well, you had plugs on it probably. No. And look at that. That is a very tidy arm. Yes, they, right. they, they look... I'm just got it oh. under the camera there. Yep. Like, with the carbon insert, they do look Factory, very, they? very cool. They look very flash. So... And it is a bit of swank, and you probably do not need them to be that stiff. Ow. Mate, they're not stiff, they're solid. 
Um, well, that's why, and that will put more stress under it, and they will break. They will break, but they will give your car a really firm feeling. I have had that before. Um, but yeah, the problem, the main problem that people don't use the carbon, that I, my understanding is, is that when you break the arm, you break the thing. So it makes replacing the arm twice as expensive. What, you mean you break the carbon insert as yeah. well? Yep. Gosh and darn. On, on the rear, when we get to that, we'll be super gluing it in. So... Did you know that? So you're actually going to... What, there's no screws on the rear arms? There's screws. Yeah. But you're still going to glue it in. I'm going to glue it in and then screw it down. Why? Because the the flex of the the carbon will all pull the screws out of the, the arm. You mean when you're on the gas? Mm. From, yeah, you'll from, come back from, and it like ruptures it all. That just gives a little bit more rigidity. In the back, that's how hard they drive. So, so, so that is the front pair of arms. On. So the the two standard inserts, you can chuck them in your Look at that. in your parts box because you might need them for I don't know. So, so what's it going to do? Going to keep the mud out. Well, yeah. All that all that these do, uh, especially when you run these with the soft arms, is they just rip through the screws. And because buckle the and they, too soft. They bow. So do HB do an option one of those? Um, they might do a carbon one, but it's uh, not as good as when, when they don't do an option plastic one. Though. No, they don't do an option plastic one. But that's when we reached out and did. All right, so that's bag F. Bag F. F so, for Fred. So, so bag F, we've 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 worked Nailed. out that Brett's gone straight to the option parts because they don't twist and bend drive shaft when he hits the pipes. No, but it will break. So there's a walker shame back, but at least we have a straight. No, but we, we, we're getting we're getting to the, the the main reason when you hit the pipes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I hit the pipe. <laughs> I've just got to, you know, yeah. clarify the reasons why. You know. People could misconstrue that anyway. I don't think that's a that's a really good thing to say in this day and age. What? Hitting the pipe. Yeah. Okay. Two strokes, mate. Bag F. Now look here, look how they've done it. So there's look at this. F four? Are we doing F four? No, it just says F. Yeah, but what? It says F02. Oh, so that would probably mean we need bag F2. And because I have my fingers in here. That's five. That's, I don't know if you're a bit dyslexic, but that's, that's not two yet. Seven. We're still looking for two. What is two? What does it look like? Give me a hint. Sway bar. Sway bar. So, yeah. What have we got here? F2. F2. What have we got here? Front sway bar. We have the sway bar. Now, a lot of people go to a softer sway bar. Because um, it's too rigid? With, because it's With too... seriously rigid arms? I'm oh, sorry, did I? But what I'll do is I'll go actually... Go up on the sway bar. No. <laughs> I'll actually um, tend to lay the, the front shocks down one. Ah, oh, so you're going for just a little bit more car, like easier car A little car bit more supple. Yeah. You know what I mean? A little bit more progressive. Yeah. Where's that scalpel, mate? Um, that could be right here. No need to be careful, mate. I'll let you. I'm not allowed any sharp things. So the standard front sway bar, two point four, and Is it's it? laser etched. So we've got it here, mate. You got your glasses yep. on. Yeah, I have two point four gigawatts. Yep, two point four. Now, on the E eight one nine RS. You know what I like about this. You don't have to build these links. Yeah, but do you know what I don't like about this? What? Is you can't get the tweak out of your sway bar if you bend it. Don't bend it. Well, there. You've had it here first, guys. That's pretty simple, mate. <laughs> I it's mean, true. It's, it's not rocket science. It's true, but don't I'm the sort it. of person who likes to put it on a piece of glass. Oh, here we go. You know. Here not, we go. After a rebuild. Not just, no, no, not no, at, no, not just no, at the no, club no, race, no, mate. No, not no, just no, getting mate. around the here pipes. Here we go. Here we go. You want the pi r square and all that kind of garbage. No. Bit of glass with a, not a feeler gauge, but even your hobby knife. And you can yeah, just right. rock it and you can see if it's flat. Yep. And if it's not flat, And then, then you'll you put it on your bench and you'll set up the droop screws and you'll go out and do two laps and it'll be all up the crap again and you won't even know. Because you've hit the pipe five times. <laughs> <laughs> no, it won't let me. It'll break on the first time. Uh, no, yeah. these cars are so strong. So strong. And They're going to need know, to be. They're I know, certainly going to need to be. I know that you know that. Now we've got the shiny side. 
going to go ahead and put this on. Here with my, how good are these Arrow Max? I've got a set. I use them heaps. Look. Yep. Just, even, just, even you could do that. I know. Try on your side. I could, here. but I'm not. I'm watching. Here we go. We'll put this one. And even these. Now, what they did on this car is a one piece. Like you said, it's a one piece, which is actually more reliable. So, so ten scale. You've actually got two of these. And a grub screw. And you got two plastic ball ends and then you've got a grub screw and you've got a set and I hate it yeah well the older cars the E817s and E819s were like that mm. but this RS version the latest incarnation yeah has what's the what's the RS really stable really stable really stiff yeah right with the yeah, with, <laughs> with carbon yeah ready steady ready steady go <laughs> I can't get this ball in Oh my god. Hang on. You're making it look um Now it's looking hard. You you jinxed it by saying it was easy. Yeah, well. Wow. I reckon it's really stressful. I'm stressed. Now I'm gonna do this up very gently because I like to do final fitting on the car. Well, you move these it actually does adjust the the, the the, you know the tension of the sway bar or of course how, it is. How, how the sway bar acts yeah and if you don't have it set but on this one you can't really adjust it too far because you've got to you've got to spend but like on a touring car a 10 like scale touring mil. car where it's just kind of straight like that you can slide it back and forth and that actually changes the rate of the yeah, sway bar the rate of the sway bar exactly so i like to run it just on the end yep. so at least i know that it's right on the is end is that your ocd and i'll do that what do you mean? No, no, my OCD is making sure that they're actually nice and straight in the car, these grub screws. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I don't like it when they're all crooked. Yeah, glad to hear. So, but I'll do like final fitting of that yep. in the car. Well, look at that. That's bag F2. F2 done. We are motoring through this build. What comes after F2? I oh, know, I can't see because of the glare. F3? Hello. <laughs> this is, this is what you're here for, mate. Oh, Gearboxes. You... No. Transmissions, gearboxes, clearances, and shimmy. There's your bone. It's a fair size bone, isn't it? 185 mil. It actually looks like something out of a tank. It's really good. But you'll be surprised, actually, when you when you hit these things hard so, enough. So, hang on a second. You've already got option towers by the looks of it, too. Um, I'm, I'm just unpacking the, the bag here. So let's have a look at the kit ones, and let's have well, a look. Well, here it is. Aluminium. Aluminium in them. And this is a fine CNC machine milled shock tower. However, I like the look of carbon fibre. I'll be honest. Um, and supposedly, I can't say because I haven't tested with these cars enough, yep. but supposedly they give a slightly different feel as well. So my eight scale buggy that I've got yes. comes with aluminium towers. Yes. And it's got berserk carbon fibres on there. Yep. Why? Because I changed the tower. <laughs> oh, you changed it. Yeah, well, that's your... You can see... And, 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 and I liked the carbon look over... The aluminium bends. Carbon doesn't bend. Car, you crash, carbon will splinter. It, it can splinter, but it, yeah. or it'll snap. Aluminium can bend and... It yeah. Give it funny feelings. Yeah, and aluminium can actually twist and stay twisted which will actually load up your, your plastics and stuff yep where the carbon won't do that the carbon yep. will flex to a point where then it'll break or it'll splinter it'll like sp and have a look at the finish of it you gotta glue those yeah i probably will not on camera but i'll probably i'll probably glue it and run through it mainly because i just don't have a glue here ah uh, so you don't have any do ca glue is i'll glue the edges no okay i took it home to glue tires oh geez something <laughs> different <laughs> That's right, so they're using yours. Um, but yeah, this this um, tower that I'm using is a direct replacement for the factory one. Yep. Um, and it's purely, yeah, aesthetically and purely because Berserk said, hey, Brett, you need this on your car. Is this the front or the rear? It looks like the front to this me. This is the front. Front box, front arms, front sway bar. Oh. I'm tipping we're doing the front. Yeah, let's do the front. All right, <clears throat> what are you working on? Nothing. We got the box. Looks, Look like it's, that. looks like it's built better than a Ford Ranger. 
Yeah. Oh. oh, what's happening over there? I'm making a mess. All right. And here's, so there's some, here's a, some plastic for you. There's a couple of ways to do these. Um, just bear with us a second. <clears throat> He's run off again. We've got some shims. We've got some shims here. We've got a C-clip. You know what I do like about HB? One thing I really like about HB... Yes. ...is all the rubber booties they give you in the kit. Yeah? What about them? Well, they just... They seal off the joints and keeps all the, all the dust and, and grit and grime out and stuff like that. Well, that's not the right shim. They definitely do. What shim is that? That's not the right shim. No. I was just checking. Oh, you, you're going to shim the clearance. Yeah. Well, why? It's not in the... I don't see it in the manual. Sorry? I don't see it in the manual, mate. So... Well, there is. There's, there's shims here. Yep. And they go behind the pinion. Yep. That's your opinion. That's my opinion. That's HB's opinion. Yeah. Now, that is a, a high-tense machined um, pinion. Yep. So, it's a gear to a metal-to-metal -metal gear mesh. And they use a... You know, the other good... You know, you know the other sweet thing about HB mm -hmm. is they're uh, not straight. They're, they're curved. Yeah, like, they're helical. Is that yeah. what that's called? Yeah. So it'll just be a quieter, nicer feel. Nicer feel? Yeah. Well, that's what it's all about. Now, I've got Mr. Ace here. Now, I know he's the front one because I texted on it number eight. So which bearing? The big or the small? Right at the, right at the pinion should be the big one. Right at, yep, that's exactly to, right. To handle the most load. Well, that's right. And that's why some people... Um, and I don't have the shims here, but they actually won't use those shims there. Yeah. They'll shim the bearing out of the case. So you've got a hardened steel bearing mm. against the face of the gear. Why? Um, because the thrust loading can damage what? the shim, distort the shim. The, the, only, shim, the, the, shim, only way, the shim can wear. The only way you can distort that shim, okay, because one, it's, it's on a flat surface, right? Yes. The only way you can distort that is either heat... Yes. ...or lack of lubrication. Yes. And that's just poor maintenance. A hundred percent. hundred percent. Like I said, I've never had a drama with them. No. I like to every race meet, I'll take the boxes apart and check over them. Because... Um, and the, this is electric, the, so nitro guys will run their cars for hours at times. Yeah, because the reason I say that is when you're building diffs... You shouldn't really take the bearing out of the case. You shouldn't move the bearing further out of the case because you're actually removing the designed width yes. for the load to, yes. to load into where it's designed. To yes, to and you're talking about thous. Yeah. In this case, on this thing, it's not that. It's not that. Diabolical, but yeah. But that is why they do it. Now, they supply two. They supply two. Um, yeah, you got to put the second one on. Well, sometimes they go behind. What's that say there? Shim. Yeah, not behind. No, not behind. In front. Go and put it in there. Are you going to put the clip on now? I'm just getting that shim to, to get out of the, the, the groove for that clip. And then you're going to put the clip in there. The Jesus clip. Why are they called Jesus clip? Because when they take off, you go, Jesus, where'd that go? Ah, <laughs> oh, look at this. Look at the float. That's not right. That is not right. So what have you done wrong? We haven't done anything wrong, but that's why we put more shims in there. Yeah. Because that is too much float. But you need to know where to put the shim because your, your contact on your crown to pinion is crucial. Exactly. So... Can I have a look at that, please? Where is the shims? Just give me a second. He's feeling. Can you, you can feel hear it? it? You can hear it. It's it's riding all wrong. I hear that. Yep. That's not nice. Turn it over. 
put it on the other side. Look at the float. Yep. So there should be two shims on this one. So you need a shim on this side. Yep. There's usually there's two shims. But you got to dismantle it. No. Oh, uh, external shims. Yeah, external shims. Have you got them there? Have you? I do. So warning when you're building. That warning you, that you don't put the C clip in the groove for the booty. Yeah, and the think booty that's clip. where it goes. That is the booty clip. Yeah. So. Try it I, now, Chief. Where's the diff? Diff. 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 Now they recommend two washers in this. I recommend building it with one and then shimming it up after. How much floats across the diff out there? more than one. We can put them both on one side, we're one on either we're side. Gonna, no, we're gonna start with them both on one side. And we're Pushing gonna, it out far away. And we're gonna see how it, look at the float, still. More. Like I said, they recommend to. Now you actually need to um, talk this up. You hear that? Mm hmm. Listen. You can hear the, the teeth riding. Yep. Push it that way. That's good. The harshness goes away. It's still. One more. One more. One more, she cried. We're going to go one more, one at a time. But I want you to talk this cover up because I've seen these tolerances change. Because as a rule, what rule? With HBs, they usually only have two shims, and there's a tight spot. Tight spots in this case. There it is. It's too far over. No, uh, it's rubbing on there. Yeah, it's too far over, mate. Well. We'll take one shim from this side. Put it on the other side. This is the problem with plastic cases. I don't like when you got such big diffs like this. And it is quite heavy. Right, it's a big heavy diff. Um, that is going to run in fantastic. Come on, mate. Look at that, there's no tight spots. It's not lubed yet. Is there float across the case? Yeah. Like I said, after day one, after about four batches, it's gonna get a full strip and re-clearance anyway. Because yeah. they do bed in an awful lot. Well, I've never seen- I've I, never... I, I'm telling you now, the three shims is probably where I'd stay. Yep. Um, you've well, got you, a uh, the gearbox, man. Well, no, it's yeah. still not right, but you can't add any more shims because you're gonna it's gonna flare the plastic out. Yeah. So you need to bolt that in and see how it's gonna feel. Absolutely. So I'll get to bolting it in then. You put some screws in. You need some lube on them. I need some lube on them, and I need a two and a half banger. Put it in the hole, mate. There we go, look at that. It doesn't even feel like I'm doing it up. Feels like it's going in aluminium, like into a proper steel oh. thread. It's good that I tapped it. Yeah. I actually can't tap these bottom two holes in the case, four holes, because they're three and a half mil. I don't have a three and a half mil tap, but I did. Three and a half mil thread? Three and a half mil thread, mate. Really? Yep. You sure about that? Yep. You're absolutely just... I am El Positivo. Okay, tower, where'd you put, where'd you put the front tower, mate? Because you need to put the tower on now. But before you put the tower on, you need to put this dude on the tower. So that goes on. That is the body post locator. Isn't it? Is that what we're calling it? Got my two mil here. 
Do, 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 do. Don't go all quiet on me, mate. No, I'm just making sure that the tower is not um, countersunk. And I've got it on the right side. Okay. That's definitely not countersunk. No. Which may or may not. I know, not. like on the YZ4 Yokomo, there's a little in, there's a little machine to recess in the tower for that post. You can put it on both sides, but if you don't put it on the right side, it's it better. doesn't locate properly. It's better, huh? Yeah. So you should always check. Not that you do. No. Because, you, because you notice how these are tapered? Yep. And what about them? Yeah. They're not. No. So what screws are you going to use? I'm going to have to use new screws. You got titanium? That'd be good, wouldn't it? Like get some really funky coloured titanium? Or alloy. I'll get some cheesy alloy ones to hold the shock tower on. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon? Get some, hey? get some bright, bright... Purple. Trinity ones. Yeah, yeah alloy what ones. What do you reckon? Let's just bang those screws in and we've got to replace them. So because the tower doesn't have a countersink in it, we can't use And it. for very good reason. You really wouldn't want to countersink um, carbon, I don't think, that far. What, chassis I'm, are? I'm sure that he's done that for very good reason. Yeah, so you get new screws. I'll have to talk to Paul about that. I expect some in my packet. Can you have a look at what you're doing there? No. You're a funky rabbit, you are. Why? <laughs> then we need to show the viewers this. <laughs> we need, uh, which side's the body go on, hey? Which... Did, it, did it sway bar? <laughs> <laughs> you got to laugh, people. Uh, Come uh, on. Which side's the body go on, mate? Does I it thought, go on the front? I and thought just... you located it for me. <laughs> hey? Wow. I, I'm in no way in any control of what's going on here. I believe you do. No, I'm just on the side. Well, you know what? I think now that this box is together and these are on, and I need to get some some uh, button head screws in there, I think yeah. we might call it a night. Nice. Okay. Yeah, cool. because now the center drive shaft goes in. This got to get attached to the chassis. Where's the center drive shaft? There it is. Um, and we'll get to that next episode. Look at this. I, I reckon the booty's a great idea. You like the booty? I do. Do you know how many people like tear them and don't put them back on? And I love to. Look at that. Yep. Boom. Booty done. I actually pack mine with white grease. Why? Because um, I believe that the booty lasts longer. Keep the temp down a bit. You know what the booty's designed to be on there for? Um, to be replaced when it's worn out. That's right. Or split. It's there. It's and which is re realistically, it's every meeting, every second meeting. Well, you should be replacing that. Like I don't know how you know. Like if you're using, if if you're an avid eight scale racer and that's your primary thing, mm. and you're out in the track two, three times a month, maybe four, you're going to be putting a booty on every month or two. If you're popping it off to service it and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, you pop it off, you get the diff out, and you put a new one on. Yep. Look at that. That goes behind the clip, don't pop me clip out. You gotta put it in on an angle, mate. Did you put it on the wrong side? No. Oh, no. You're actually yeah. supposed to put that in first. No, you put it in, it's got short pins and long pins. Oh, okay. <laughs> well. That's all right. We can go inside you got, out. You gotta booty both ends. No. You don't have one on the rear? That's in the center diff. Oh, okay. I'll let, I'll let that one slip, mate, through to the keeper. That's all right. Yeah, no. Nah, Everybody's right. allowed to have I one. I was just making sure that you're I on the put, ball. I can put shock towers on wrong. You can put boots on. Yeah. I always put my boots on wrong in the morning. Do you? Left <laughs> and right? Yeah. All right, guys. So we've got the front gearbox assembled. The diffs in. We've got the camber links done. We've got the uh, the chassis coming diff in, together. Side pods. So next episode, we'll be looking to get the front suspension We've got the hard arms for when you hit the pipe, it's all good. Yep, we're going to smash the pipe, mate. Yep. You're when, gonna, when you're on the pipe. You're going to love it, mate. It's going to kick butt. Sway bar. 2.4 mil. 2.4. Yep. Aluminium tower. You can just throw it. you got to say that. It does look pretty sexy. Carbon looks no. great. It really does. Carbon's just the, just the coolest. But people have said to me that they do make the car feel more supple. They take take, take some harshness out of it. Well, you've got, I don't no, you've got no flex in this. None. Yeah, None it's whatsoever. It's just direct. And this is a like little bit hard arms are direct. Yeah. 
So, but at least that looks cool. Look at that. All yeah. matchy matchy. Yeah. Even when we put it on the right side. <laughs> it's going to go like this. I'm sure it isn't. I'm sure it is. No. <laughs> no. Even though. <laughs> All right. I think we're cooked tonight. <laughs> I think we've done enough tonight, guys. Yep. This has been episode three of our HB Racing E819 I'm gonna, yeah, RS build. I'm going to crash episode four. I think you should come back first. I'm, I'm looking forward to having the gearbox expert here to get these gearboxes done. And um, yeah, I think it's going to come together pretty quick. I think this thing's going to come together pretty quick. I think we made head roads tonight. Um, yeah. Just as well I was here because I'll tell you what, you'd be pulling it all apart again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, I'm Brett from Hearns, and this is Simon Healy. Thanks, guys. So thanks, for, uh, thanks for watching us build our HB Racing E819 RS. See, See you next week. See you next episode. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.